Hello, today I'm looking at Sutter number 64, MN64, which is called the Maha Lunkia Sutta, uh, translated as the Greater Discourse to Malunkia Putta. <clears throat> now the location is Savati in Jetta's Grove at Anatapindika's Park, and the people involved are Buddha, uh, Buddha's followers, the bhikkhus, uh, with specific mention of, of course, Maluna Kapota and the Venerable Ananda. Now Buddha asks his followers if they remember the five lower fetters as he taught them. Maluna Putta says he does remember them. Buddha then asks, in what way does Maluna Putta remember them? Maluna Putta replies that the five lower fetters he remembers as taught by the Buddha are identity view, doubt, adherence to rules and observances, sense desire and ill will. Now identity view as I understand it is the clinging to the five aggregates, the material form, feelings, perceptions, mental formations and consciousness. And sense desire is the six senses of touch, sight, smell, hearing, thought, taste. So once Alunka Putta has outlined these, Buddha responds, To who do you remember my teaching the five lower fetters in this way? Taught this way, wouldn't followers of other sects rebuff this by the simile of the infant? For a young, <coughs> excuse me, tender infant has no notion of identity, so how could identity, identity view arise within him? yet the underlying tendency to identity view lies within him. A young tender infant has no notion of teachings, so how can he doubt, have doubt about the Dharma arising in him? Yet the underlying tendency to doubt lies within him. Buddha uh, goes on to make the same point about the uh, other lower fetters, adherence to rules and observances, sense desire and ill will. So the monk Ananda suggests then that Buddha takes the opportunity to teach the five lower fetters. So Buddha begins explaining that an untaught, ordinary person who has no regard for the noble ones, <clears throat> who is unskilled and undisciplined in the Dhamma, he is obsessed and obslaved by identity view, he is obsessed and obslaved by doubt, obsessed and enslaved by rules and observances, obsessed and enslaved by sense desires, is obsessed and is enslaved by ill will. These are the five lower fetters. Conversely, a well-taught noble follower who has regard for noble ones and is skilled and disciplined in their dhamma, who has regard for true men, he does not abide with a mind obsessed and enslaved by identity view. He understands as it actually is the escape from the arisen identity view. And, and identity view together with the underlying tendency to it is abandoned in him. Similarly, Buddha goes on to explain the same occurs with doubt, rules and observations, sense desires and ill will. And there is a path, a way to the abandoning of the five lower fetters. It is not possible to abandon uh, the five lower fetters without following this path. Just as it is not possible to breach the heartwood of a tree without cutting through its bark and sapwood. But it is possible by following the path, by cutting through the bark and sapwood. Also, when the Dhamma is being taught to someone for the cessation of an identity view, if his mind does not enter into the teachings and acquire confidence, steadiness and resolution, then he can be regarded like a feeble man trying to swim across the swollen river Ganges. He would not achieve this. But if his mind enters into and acquires confidence, steadiness and resolution, then he can be regarded like a strong man swimming uh, across the swollen river Ganges. He will achieve this. And what, Ananda, is the way to abandon the five fetters? Buddha continues, With seclusion from acquisitions, with the abandoning of unwholesome states, 
with the complete tranquilization of body inertia, quite secluded from sense pleasures, unwholesome states, a bhikkhu enters upon the first jhana, which is accompanied by applied and sustained thought, with rapture and pleasure, born of seclusion. Whatever exists therein of material form, feeling, perception, formations and consciousness, that is, the five aggregates, he sees these states as impermanent, as suffering, as a disease, a tumour, a barb, a calamity, an affliction, as disintegrating, as void, as not self. He turns his mind away from these states and directs it towards Nibbana. This is peaceful, this is the sublime, that is the stilling of all formations, the relinquishing of all attachments, the destruction of craving, dispassion, cessation of Nibbana. Cessation. Nibbana. If he is steady in that, he attains the destruction of the taints, and the taints are defined as sense, desire, existence and ignorance. But if he does not attain the destruction of the taints because of that delight in the Dhamma, then with the destruction of the five lower fetters, he becomes one due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes and there attain final Nibbana without ever, ever returning from that world. Buddha then goes on to repeat the above for the other jhanas, right through to the attaining of the base of nothingness. This, Venerable Sirs, Buddha concludes, is the way to the abandoning <coughs> of the five lower fetters. Ananda then asks, if this is the path to the abandoning of the five lower fetters, then how is it that some bhikkhus are said to gain deliverance of mind and some are said to gain, gain deliverance by wisdom, uh, which I understand as being by intuition rather than by reasoning. And the Buddha uh, replies, the difference is in their abilities. Ananda was satisfied and delighted at the Blessed One's words. And there ends Majjhimakaya number 64. Now, I have to say I had a lot of difficulty with this sutta uh, when reading alongside Majjhimakaya number 8 and Majjhimakaya number 2. Now, Majjhimakaya number 8 is to deal with effacement and Majjhimakaya number 2 deals with the taints. And I quote from uh, Majjhimakaya, oh, well, a paraphrase from Majjhimakaya number 8, the Selika Sutta, um, effacement or relinquishing, relinquishing effacements. And in Bhikkhu Bodhi version, uh, on page 123, uh, paragraph 4, some bhikkhus enter upon and abide in the first jhana, which we just talked about in 64, he might think thus, I'm a, I'm, I am abandoning <coughs> in effacement. Oh, sorry, I am abiding in effacement. I beg your pardon. I am abiding in effacement. The Buddha goes on to say, but it is not these attainments or jhanas that are called effacement in the Noble One's discipline. These jhanas are called pleasant abidings here and now in the Noble One's discipline. So Majjhimakaya number 8 seems to be saying that the jhanas do not lead to effacement and yet in 64 it is saying it leads to, uh, leads to uh, relinquishing the five lower fetters. Um, so the only sort of conclusion I can come to on, on the dilemma between these two different suttas is that uh, Majjhimakaya number 8 <coughs> is detailing the overcoming of personality or so antisocial faults via effacement. So, looking at, uh, on the list, I'm looking at the on the computer. The 44 uh, um, action. So, the effacement is to deal with things like cruelty, killing, stealing, lying, malicious speech, harsh speech, gossiping. So it's all personality faults or personality traits. And um, <clears throat> overcoming these is by uh, abstaining from these particular actions, using effacement, using inclination of the mind, using avoidance, 
uh, using uh, uh, abstaining from the action by positivity and also by extinction. So we talk about effacements as being, um, I say things like covetousness, gossiping, harsh, which, whereas lower fetters tending to deal with um, things like um, personality, identity view, uh, doubt in the Dhamma, uh, clinging to rules and rituals. And the only one with a crossover is that one of the lower fetters is ill will, and one of the uh, effacements is also ill will, which is listed as a fetter and, a hin and uh, also one of the hindrances. So, so I'd, I'd in, in conclusion, I mean, I, I've come to the conclusion that um, the uh, in this greater discourse to Malankia Putta, uh, it's by dwelling in the jhanas that one realises that um, identity view, doubt in the Dharma, and clinging to rules and rituals and so on, is achieved through the jhanas. But uh, trying to overcome things like cruelty, killing, stealing, lying, malicious speech, harsh speech, gossiping, covetousness and so on, it has to be overcome by uh, if you like training, I suppose, using effacement, inclination of the mind, avoidance, and so on. So that that's my conclusion to the difference between how to overcome these things, as mentioned in Majmakaya number 8 and Majmakaya number 64. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.